Hi there, Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glen Bervy Folk Duo. Welcome to Lesson 20 in our How to Learn the Bagpipes series. Today we're going to look at a very common and very old tune called The Rowan Tree. Now, we have been using, up until now, we've been using the College of Piping, the National Piping Centre and Robert Wallace's book. However, today we're going to deviate and I'm going to take recommend that you use the musical score contained at the Army Cadet Force Piping and Drumming website. That's the Army Cadet Force Piping and Drumming. Once you get there, on the left hand side you'll see in the scroll down menu that there's parade and concert music highlighted. If you go in there, there are numerous tunes in there and you'll find the score for the Rowan Tree that we're going to use today. The site is designed for children involved in the cadet forces, however the music's up there for all to use. I highly recommend this music. There's a lot of music on the internet which is less than reliable or perhaps just a little bit orthodox, all the scores contained on the Army Cadet Force Piping and Drumming website are very accurate, they're good scores and they're very well written, they can be trusted in other words. So, this uh, lesson is actually specifically designed for a group down in Stanley in the Falkland Islands, however as usual please feel free to use it. So if you have your music downloaded, that's the Rowan Tree from the Army Cadet Force Piping and Drumming website, we'll make a start. You'll notice if you have your music that the time signature shown is a C or common time. To all intents and purposes, this is in 4-4 time. We also have two introductory notes at the start there. I'm going to play the full tune for you now as it's written in the score. Now, straight away, uh, what you may have noticed is that the last line in part two is exactly the same, almost, as the second line in part one. So we really have a maximum of three lines of music to learn here. There's lots of long notes, a couple of embellishments to pay attention to, potential for perhaps crossing noises C to E, but apart from that, generally quite an easy tune. There are lots of slight variations on the score that I've just played, usually all down to the length of, of a particular note. This is pretty standard, this is certainly the way that I would play it. Looking at the first phrase, which will take us from the introductory notes to the last E in bar 2 of line 1. We have several C's in a row here. They are separated by embellishments. The first embellishment is a grip from C back up to C, then a doubling on C, an E grace note to B, and a doubling on C before heading up towards E. Playing that phrase first of all, Easy enough, G grace note to A, which is held, a travelling note of B, and then we hit the C's. You'll see that the C's are tied, a G grace note to C, 
Then the grip comes in. Make sure you get right down to low G in the grip. Put the D grace note on low G and then come up cleanly to C again. Try and not travel up through the B. We hold that C and then we have a doubling on C. That's a G grace note on C followed by a D grace note on C. E grace note to B followed by a second doubling on C and straight up to the E, long E and strike. When you're learning this in any other tune, if you take the time over the embellishments, play it slowly, make the embellishments every bit as slow as the rest of the tune, then you're producing clean embellishments if, if slow, and all you have to do is speed the whole tune up to bring it up to a uh, marching tempo. I'm going to play that phrase again, then let you practice it. You'll also note that when I talk you through this, I explain what each embellishment is. Now, it will help if by this time you have actually learned how to play each doubling, how to play grips, without them being explained in detail. Uh, however, I'll continue to do that because we can miss wee bits out and uh, not make as good a job of the embellishments as we could. So that first phrase again... <coughs> Now, to the next phrase, moving to uh, the high A, after we have a doubling on the high A, then to a half doubling on the F, coming off the high A, straight to F, and then one G grace note on the F. Long F down to E, G grace note to F, high A, and a second half doubling on F, E, and strike, and that's the end of the second phrase there. It should sound like this. Now you'll see that there is a doubling on the first high A, there's not a doubling on the second. It wouldn't do any harm if a doubling was to be put there on the second, but it's not shown in the music, so purely for self-control, for control of your fingers, don't put a doubling on that second high A. The second phrase again. <laughs> Giving you time to practice that, if you want to stop the, the video at that point, we'll now go to the full first line of part one, putting phrases one and two together. Please note that there are some really long notes in there. They're identified with ties in the main. That's the wee eyebrows over each uh, matching note. You can use that if you want, or you can just uh, leave it out and, and be content in the knowledge that it's a long note. There's also a song goes with this tune, which I'm not going to sing for you, but the tune follows the song very closely. If you want to use that to get yourself acquainted with the tune, then please go ahead. That's us done more or less line one, certainly phrases one and two. We're now going to look at phrase three, which takes us from the last two notes in line one, the low A and the B, into bar two in line two. It's very similar to the first phrase in line one, and this is the phrase here. Two beats on that E there, again. Now if you split the phrase up that way, it's exactly the same 
as phrase one in this tune. Once more with that, no real need for explanation, you've already done it. Then, finishing off, doubling, F doubling, which is two G grace notes on F to the a long F. E doubling on E, G grace note on E, followed by an F grace note on E. Nice long C, G grace note to a long B, D grace note back to C, from the C closing down to a low G grace note to A, and finishing with a burrow. The low A there, first low A, two full beats, very long note indeed. The phrase itself, Do not play that E at the end of the line. The E belongs to the second part. We'll do that again for you. You'll see that the first note in bar three in line two here is an E and it's a cut E. We don't spend too much time on it at all. However, don't let that prevent you from producing a nice open and even E doubling. So the last phrase in part one again Proper burl if you like, down and across. You've got loads of time to get that burl in there, so please aim to make a really strong, open, controlled burl every time. Let's have a look at the full part one then. Although the tune is designed as a quick march, and in fact it's sung rather quicker than that, there's nothing to stop you using this as a slow march, so you could more or less play it at that pace. Anyway, only one more line to learn. I know there's two uh, lines in part two here, but as we've already said, the last line is exactly the same as line two. That's the line we've just looked at. We move more or less to the top hand here, Going on to the first phrase from the E at the end of line one. Let's have a look at that. E, strike to E along E, high A, strike to high A, then another long high A, high G and a thumb or back grace note to high G. F and a doubling on F, two G grace notes to F. That's the end of our phrase there. So what we have here is two or more notes in succession separated by some form of embellishment. Again, very much about timing here. You've got all the time in the world to get your E strike in, your high A strike or doubling, your high G, and then the back grace note or thumb grace note to high G. Finally, the only real full doubling in the whole sequence, the F and the two G grace notes on F. Let's have a look at that one more time. Now, the last uh, phrase that we have to learn here in the tune gets a little bit more busy, but if we just take our time with it, it shouldn't present any great problems. We come up to high A, a half doubling on E, which is straight to E from the high A, no G grace note, but an F grace note. Remember that the half doubling should take the same amount of time as a full doubling, so it should sound like this. Okay, moving on from there, an F 
second F with a G grace note separating them. An E from the E down to low G for a throw on D. A C, a doubling on C, G grace note followed by a D grace note. And a doubling on B. That's the end of our phrase. Let's do that again. Please try and match both the C and the B doublings in the last bar in that line there. Um, you'll notice them, it would be great if you could play them both open and controlled. Uh, but whatever you do, make them the same because it will really contrast if you produce two different sounding doublings. Uh, let's have a look then at that phrase once more. Doubling. And we'll play the full line there from the E at the end of part one. Let's do that again. I make no apologies for making these embellishments as huge and deliberate as I'm making them there. Uh, you're learning the tune, please get used to controlling the embellishments. Uh, when the tune itself speeds up, the embellishments can speed up as well, but they must still all be complete and still be controlled. That's the learning in the tune done, because the last line, starting from the two notes, the A and the B in line 3 there, we've already done. It is in effect uh, line 2 of part 1. It goes like this. Second chance to get in a showpiece burrow. Try, uh, try your best to get that in. You'll notice that the burrow uh, is shown in the embellishment. It's shown as starting in the low G, but that's because you're already on the A. So don't go looking for this uh, <coughs> embellishment, which is slightly, usually uh, shown as slightly bigger. You're already on the low A, so low G, low A, low G, low A completes the embellishment. That's pretty much it. Uh, this tune for me goes quite a long way back. Uh, it was one of my grandfather's favourite tunes and I learned it by ear. I was never actually taught it. Probably a different version I learned, but uh, I learned this one when I was about six, I think, uh, because I didn't read music and I came back from lessons on a Saturday morning having forgotten what I'd been taught. Couldn't read music, so I couldn't help myself. So I learned the Rowan Tree. Uh, so it's been with me for quite a long time, since around about 1970, 1971. Good grief. Last century. So we'll finish off with this then. The full tune.
So that's the round three, very popular tune, harmonises very well too, so if you're playing it with a band there's some really simple harmonies, which I think are also contained in the Army Cadet Force Piping and Drumming web page. So, uh, that's lesson 20 uh, of our How to Learn the Bagpipe series. Tune was The Rowan Tree. This is Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glenn Bervy. Folk duo wishing you a happy piping career. <laughs>